What's the word, y'all? Welcome back to Call Game, Kenny For Real, whatever you want to call it. We had three games today, two of them nationally televised, and they were pretty fun. But I couldn't even enjoy it. Be sure to leave a like on the video. Subscribe if you are new. I'm definitely going to be giving a lot of NBA opinions in today's video. You may disagree. That's completely okay. Use that comment section. We have built this community of rational NBA fans that could disagree and still have this conversation. So be heard in that comment section. The reason why I could not enjoy these games is because of the call. It is so crazy how the nasty televised games are so much worse on the commentary than just like individual team commentators. And I know they are at a disadvantage because they're doing it remotely, but whether you're in the arena or in your bedroom, there is no excuse to continue to call it the nastiest Antetokounmpo, the younger Antetokounmpo. Like, what? How do you say that five times in the game and none of your producers in your IRB is like, yo, yo, Chris, he's not, he's actually the oldest. He's actually the, every time the Nassus touched the ball, did anything. Well, he's actually the younger onto the, no, he is not. He's just not. And then you throw that on top of them talking over each other, the weird mouth sounds. It was ASMR, but I don't want to just mute the game because I like hearing the squeaking of the shoes. It's just hearing the ball bounce. It's part of basketball. So I couldn't really enjoy too much, but. I guess that leads us to talking about this first game, which is the Lakers getting a win over the Milwaukee Bucks. And I think the title of this video has to do with, are the Lakers still the favorite to win it all? Because obviously the Brooklyn Nets made significant moves with their three all-stars, three superstar players. The Bucks are a championship quality team. And there are a lot of things going on around the league when it comes to contenders. But games like this have me somewhat convinced that I would still probably put my money on the Lakers to win it all. And I know that's saying a lot, especially when you consider Brooklyn and how good they could potentially be. But this is like just such a complete team. Anthony Davis so far this season hasn't been the Anthony Davis that we know. And it hasn't really mattered. LeBron has coasted through most of this season, except for the ones where he's like going against Giannis. Because I think, I think him and Giannis got a little beef, especially since the crown incident. So he makes sure that he comes out to play against Giannis. And when he wants to come out to play, where he's an MVP player again. And that's probably one of the reasons why if I'm ending the season right now, he is still top three in MVP, even though he has been coasting. He might be number one in MVP, honestly. Because when he is coasting, he hits that switch in a lot of these quarters. The fourth quarter, whether it be like against the Grizzlies, against the Bulls, you know, those are games that were close through three quarters. The LeBron's like, okay, I'll play basketball. Today was one of those days like I'm going to play basketball from the start and just remind people at home that I'm still the best player in the league. It just, it just was that. And then not to mention, they just have so many weapons of players that play their role. Dennis Schroeder, bad game from him. But guess what? Alice Caruso came in and played amazing defense, was getting steals, getting rebounds, playing Alice Caruso type ball. And Cal Kuzma, though he finished with five points and shot 33% from the field, his impact was felt. When Kuzma plays defense, you can notice it. And as long as Kuzma's playing at least decent defense, he's getting rebounds, he's chasing uh, loose balls, he's going to be valuable on your team. So Anthony Davis, again, struggled tonight, but defensively, he was all let in the bag of chips. The way Montrezl Harrell, Marcus saw Anthony Davis guard Giannis was beautiful. So that has me thinking that they're probably still the favorite, especially if KCP is playing like his finals MVP KCP moments. You know what I'm saying? So all that being said, let me know in the comment section what you think about the Lakers. Are they still the favorite? But let me, let me talk about the other team here because, well, I'm a little bit afraid from the Bucs. Now, I don't want to beat a dead horse because we talked about the Bucs and their struggles when they do struggle a decent amount. And you know what? I feel kind of like a hypocrite because when the Bucs are playing really good, I find myself just kind of being like, it's the Bucs. You know what I'm saying? They'll be good. But when they end up being bad, I come out here and talk about it. So my apologies. But a lot of things that, that we see, as I see, is the problem with the Milwaukee Bucks came to the surface today, and it has to do with the way they defend. They, they put together this defense over the past couple years that turns out to be top five, number one defense in the league, but there are big holes in it, right? When they're going against these great teams like the Lakers, like like, um, I guess I'm counting the Utah Jazz in this too. When they go against these great teams, they get absolutely torched from the three-point line. Thinking about their losses this season, at least in their recent losses, all of them have come from the top three-point shooting teams in the league. They give up these open shots. And, and you know what? Part of this is, has to do with Mike Boonehoser. Again, I don't want to beat a dead horse because we talked about how I think that if, if Mike Boonehoser is a coach of this team, I don't know how they win a championship. But his defensive scheme just allows so many open threes, and the great teams are going to hit those. The reason that they lost in the finals wasn't just because the defense built the wall and prevented the, them from scoring. They also gave up a ton, a ton of shots to the Miami Heat, and that came to reality again today. 
KCP had possessions in that corner where he caught the ball, he thought about what he was going to eat for dinner, he set his feet, he checked the temperature in the arena, and then shot the ball. He had so much time. The closest defender didn't even want to close out, but that is the type of defense that this team plays. Against the average and below average teams, this will work 90% of the time. But when you go against the elite of the elite, it just will not work. And that is just their defense I want to talk. On the offensive side of the ball, Giannis took a step back these last couple days, bro. I'm, I'm being honest with you. Earlier in the season, he wasn't playing like, I'm going to dribble through you. And I'm either going to get called for a charge or the ref is going to call a block. All of this game, he was just trying to go straight through people. And earlier in the season, he wasn't really doing it. In this game, for some reason, whether he was in his own mind, he was like, I got to go straight to the basket, straight to the basket, straight to the basket. And that's how you end up with seven turnovers in the first half. And again, that goes to why I say the Lakers are still a favorite. They played amazing defense to force him to have seven turnovers and him not to have his second free throw attempt until the second half. We're talking about Giannis here who draw some of the most fouls in the league. It's just their offense is very weird. For Chris, Chris Middleton, as good as he is, as lethal as he is, this game particularly, he wasn't as aggressive as you want him to be. Um, I don't understand what Torrey Craig, why Torrey Craig doesn't get any minutes in a regular season game, but the Nassers does. And the Nassers wasn't terrible today. But Torrey Craig was playing like decent amount of minutes on a team that went to the conference finals last year. He was starting for a good majority of that season before Gary Harris came back. But he can't. He getting. He's getting DMPs. Coach's decision, and I had to make sure that he wasn't like injured or something. He got cleared like last week, and he still can't get PT. And it's confusing to me, especially since the rest of their team on the bench, like the guys that they signed to hit three pointers, aren't hitting three pointers. So Torrey Craig can like help you defensively. And the last thing I want to say about this game, <laughs> I know it's a lot, but I mean it was, it was the biggest game of the night, is the last two games against Brooklyn and against the Lakers in this one. When it came down to the nitty-gritty, the last couple possessions when it was a close game, I don't know how we have a defensive player of the year player not guarding the other team's best player, or even close to it. Anthony Davis has been guarded by Pat Connaughton, <laughs> which is very weird to me. But Pat Connaughton held his own. No disrespect to Pat Connaughton. He was holding his own. Again, Anthony Davis didn't have a good game. But he was, and, I mean, Giannis wasn't guarding Anthony Davis or LeBron. And then the previous game, when, when they hit the big shot, Giannis was guarding Jeff Green, if I'm not mistaken. And I understand he plays, like, I think his role on the Milwaukee Bucks is the safety in the passing lanes, help defense he's amazing at. But when the team needs a stop, I would want my defensive player of the year player guarding the ball, right? I, I know Giannis ain't the most laterally quick, but it's LeBron. It's not like we got, I'm asking him to guard Kyrie. I'm just, I don't know. Let me know in the comment section what you think about that. But I, I would like to see the defensive player of the year get, like, good defensive plays late in the games. Get the stops that you need. Um, the next nationally televised game was the Jazz getting a win over the Pelicans. And Jazz fandom has been all in my mentions over the past couple weeks. Like, talk about us, talk about us, talk about us. Here we go. I'm happy to see y'all having this type of resurgence after what happened in the bubble. And a lot of that, um, the 3-1 lead, I'm not solely basing on Bojan not being there, but obviously he was a 20-point per game scorer for y'all and everything. This year seems like a year of chemistry for y'all, but I don't want to sit here and talk about y'all being a contender just yet because even last year, y'all went on like a 12-game win streak, and I was super excited about y'all back then. I just want to see y'all put it together in the postseason. That's all I really care about, you know what I'm saying? I'm happy to see Mike Conley playing better. I'm, I'm, I guess right now Jordan Clarkson will be like top three in, in six man of the year, maybe number one, but then again, like Chris Boucher and stuff like that. He's having such a great season, and, and he is a streaky type shooter. I would hate for him to play this well this early in the season and have the middle of the season he's kind of bad, and then you get to the playoffs, and then he's, you know what I'm saying? Um, But I'm happy to see you guys playing so, so very well. Donovan Mitchell had a superstar caliber night today from dropping Nikhil Alexander-Walker to doing some of those wraparound passes he's done over the past week or so, and is just playing over overall great basketball me and my girlfriend watched the first half of this game together and and I was telling her or just you know just having banter talk telling her or teaching her about the game of basketball and I was talking about how bad of a shooting team the Pelicans were and then the Pelicans came out and became the best shooting team at least in the first quarter and she was like are they going to continue this and I was like no the Jazz is a good defense they're going to adjust and they did and it was like night and day between the first quarter to the next three quarters they clamped up on the defensive side of the ball Rudy Gobert had another good game and Donovan Mitchell 
Joe Ingles off the bench has been working very well for them. Um, Derek Favors in the limited minutes that he is playing, he still holds his own down low, especially against a team that was trying to bully them down low. So overall, good win. I'm happy for y'all. Uh, Bojan hasn't been as great this season as he was last year, but I'm sure with a little bit more repetition because, I mean, he was one of those players that basically hasn't played basketball since March, since the initial shutdown because he had his surgery so he basically went eight or eight or so months without playing professional basketball. So I'm sure he'll get back into it. But I like that this team is being competitive and they're playing very, very well. Talk to me again once we're later in the season or we're in playoff time and we'll see how much of what we're seeing right now is real versus something else. You know what I'm saying? But congratulations on being, I guess, the second best team in the league record-wise. So quickly talking about the Pelicans. Like I told my girlfriend, that shooting in that first quarter was a fluke. It's just not who they are. And then they they – reverted back to the old selves where Eric Bledsoe is kind of like the scapegoat a lot of the times where it's two seconds on the shot clock, they just give it to him. Like, he's the vet. Just shoot it. Just shoot it. Just shoot it. And he does shoot it, and it's it's a brick. I mean, Brandon Ingram and Zion both are such great players. The rest of the team just isn't orchestrated well around them, but in due time. That's what I feel like. I feel like in due time, things will eventually turn. Um, I'm, Steven Adams, as good as he is, it still surprised me that they, they extended him so quickly. Um, again, he is a very good player, but when you, you're you playing with Zion and a bunch of non-shooters, Steven Adams is kind of a weird player to have there. So that's all we have to say about the Pels. And then this last game, bro, I'm not spending time on the last game. I had to cut this one off. I'm sorry. This was the weirdest officiated game I've ever seen, at least in this season in recent history. Every couple seconds was a whistle, and it led to Draymond Green getting ejected. But fouls on fouls on fouls, I'm like, bro, give it a rest. Nobody's here to watch you blow your whistle, Mr. Referee. And I'm not saying he favored one team or another, but it was just hard to watch. Visually, it wasn't a good game. Shout out to RJ Barrett, who's playing with way more confidence this season than last year. It's all you want from your, from your young, um, up-and-coming players. And then Julius Randle having another good game. I don't know how Draymond Green got ejected in this one. That's all I really have to say. Uh, thank you so much for watching this episode. If you enjoyed it, be sure to leave it a like. And I'll see y'all very soon. Call game.